to formally write what you have just observed in the model that we looked at. Normally, the number one precautions or rules. So, formally, the number one rule that we observed is this. If a qualitative variable has M categories, then use or the introduce then introduce only m minus 1 dummy variables otherwise the model falls into dummy variable trap in other words, so what is a dummy variable trap? A dummy variable trap is this. When with the intercept term in a model, we use the number of dummy variables equal to the number of categories, then the model comes with perfect collinear. So that is the dummy variable trap. So that's what we saw. Otherwise, on the other hand, the rule then becomes this. If we have m categories, we use m minus 1 dummies because otherwise we will fall into that trap. So we uh, saw that. Right? Now, number two is, we also saw that uh, with inter intercept terms, there will be one category with no dummies at all. So the category, so the category without dummy assigned, is known as base oblique benchmark oblique reference categories reference category so we saw that for North East and North Central, we have this B1, beta 1 plus beta 2. For South, we had beta 1 plus beta 3. And this beta 1 is for the West. So, our result that we obtained earlier, it goes like this. There is the mean hourly wage of the West. And then the addition or multiple, addition or subtraction depends on beta's value. So, and then the added chain for North East and North Central. So from beta 1 and beta 2, we get to know two things. First of all, we get to know that northeast and north central, its uh, average annual salary. And then also we get to know from this beta 2 that how the wage specifically for northeast and north central, it is different from the west. And for the second one also, the comparison, it can be made with reference to West. So that's why that category is known as the base or benchmark or reference category. Okay. And uh, obviously, intercept. Right? Because I mean, obviously, it is bigger one that we write, but the, the general is this that the intercept represents. the mean value of this category of this category so that much we have seen okay now here here also we have intercept coefficients and uh, much like we had in multiple regression model so here since we have this idea of this difference we use a different term and that different term is Differential intercept category, differential intercept coefficients. Okay. 
So for beta 2, beta 3, that's what we know. And for beta 1, it's the benchmark category coefficient. But also you can include this here also. Okay. So that's how the coefficients uh, behave. All right. Now we also saw that uh, to bypass the problem of dummy variable trap, one of the ways to remove the intercept term altogether and use the number of dummies equal to the number of categories. So that way, uh, that that method is also available here. Now you have studied ANOVA earlier and with reference to that uh, study of ANOVA, remember how we defined the model for ANOVA. So the model that we wrote earlier with only dummies, that model can be stated as ANOVA with two qualitative variables. The rest of it remains the same. So, ANOVA model with two qualitative variables. Okay, so now we will look at another model with two categories, a fully estimated model. Okay. Because as I said, that uh, going through examples is the best way to learn dummy variables. So let's look at another example, and this time it is fully estimated model. So you don't see UI there. So the estimated model comes from the sample of 528 persons or individuals. Okay. So what is the model? Let me first write the equation result, then we'll look at the definition of the variable. So this is 8.8148 plus 1.0997 d2i, and then minus, as I said that it can be minus also d3i, where y is our hourly wage d2 is number one, d2 is one zero, so one is married, zero is unmarried. Okay. Now d3 is one is for south, residents of south, resident of South, zero is otherwise. So now we are trying to interpret these numbers. So, for example, first question is that what is the benchmark category? What is the benchmark or reference okay. given this one? What is the benchmark or reference? So, what I'm trying to say that if I uh, if I put 0, 0 here, then I will get obviously some mean hourly wage, which will be 8.8148. So this number, it is whose mean hourly wage. Okay. So for that, let us again uh, just look at the four uh, scenarios that we have defined by these two numbers. So if I say one comma one, that means married and comes from south. If one comma zero, then married from non-south, let's say. Then comes zero comma one, so unmarried from south, and zero comma zero becomes our benchmark. So that is unmarried, non sub And according to that, we have four different values that can be evaluated from this single model. So when I'm talking about these three, 
know, we have to be very clear about the reference that we are making because when I'm taking, when I am looking at values other than this, other than this 8.8148, 8 okay, then I must be very clear about what kind of differences I'm looking for. So in one, probably I can get a difference between a person who is non south and unmarried, and then between that and someone who is married and has some non -sound. Okay. But obviously, if I have to compare between married and unmarried, both coming from south, then I have to make a difference, or I have to take a difference from between these two categories. That comparison will not come from the reference category. Okay. So what I'm saying here again is that I have four numbers. Okay. So first is some this and then some 1.0997 and so on. So I'll have four numbers. We have to be very clear about what do, what those numbers signify, which is a, which is easy. The important part is that when I'm saying that these two numbers are different by this much, that's 1.0997, then I must be very correct, very cautious about this difference, what this difference basically tells us. If you do not, if you fail to identify the benchmark or the reference category, then the comparison or the difference that you will talk about will be entirely wrong. This is first. Second is obviously in a model, as you have seen, while defining dummies, we don't exclusively mention these four categories and about the benchmark category, we do not talk at all. Talk at all. By, the, by defining the dummies, we automatically define these four categories. Okay? So that's why you have to be very careful about the recognition of the categories that are coming up by the by the use of two or three or more dummy variables. Okay. Now we have seen models only with only dummies. The natural question that comes up in our mind that what happens if I use dummies and Excel or variables together? Dummy variables and in general the continuous variables. You could use that. What happens then? So let's look at a model which will be uh, which, will, which will be an extension of the features model that we have done, but this time it will involve a x variable. Okay. And not only that, this time we'll look at some evaluated values also. But this model, to uh, name it. This model is called ANCOVA model. I mean, in, in general, ANCOVA model is uh, discussion of ANCOVA model is a different topic, but for the time you say, you just notice that regression model which contains both these variables, they are known as so ANCOVA means analysis of covariance. Okay, so let's look at the model now. So here also we we'll go the same way. Y i equal to beta one plus beta two d two i, then beta three d three i. So this part was there already, and now we have beta four x i plus e one. So how to define x x i here? X i is the spending on Public school, public school per student. Okay. So that means now, now we are looking at the difference between the difference uh, among the the teachers coming from these three different geographical regions. But we are looking at that only after controlling. For the spending on public school per student, so this, this is why. Okay, this is called. This is why xi 
is called covariate or in our older term control variable so what i'm saying here that now my analysis is first taking the effect out of xi and then i'm looking at the differences of salary so otherwise the model remains the same okay so now we look at the fully solved models okay so the, the one that we have here it is after controlling for spending on education or student so after controlling that okay so now let us look at the numerical structure of this model so this model becomes so not going to the details of it we are interested in something else So, so this is this is some twenty nine. I mean, just to use a number, then two point nine. It's a b two y. This is minus three point two d three i plus two point three x. Okay. Now one of the <coughs> Difference that observable here is that if I look at the t values, okay, corresponding to these dummies, here they are becoming minus one point five eight six, and for the other it becoming minus one point seven one zero. Now for the same model, if I look at this whole model for the dummies here, first of all, definitely the model only with dummies, only with Dummies. So if I look at that model, which comes only with dummies, what will happen? Obviously, the intercept will change to so 0.8, and then rest of it will also change. So here comes a plus. So 1.5 d2i minus 1.7 d3i. Okay, and then we do not have any category for any any room for x. Okay, so for t also it becomes. For T also, it becomes zero point six four five, and here it becomes minus zero point six nine The interesting part that is to note here that in this model, okay, the coefficients of dummies are not significant. Okay. So in the model above, where we have control for spending on education. Okay. Their the coefficients are not significant, but for this model, they are significant. So, what is the learning here? The learning is that while using dummy, if I control by some other variable. If I account for the covariate, that is, which also varied with y, but, or rather, the variance in y is also also analyzed by some other variable, which is not qualitative, but I fail to include it. So, if I include it, as you can see, the result in the coefficient of gamma is being not statistically significant. So, this is the 
this is the scenario where we are trying to say that you have to remember when you are using dummy that you are not missing out some important exam. Okay. So that the, with the art of using dummy, the qualitative scenario, you may not miss the quantitative scenario that is involved within the whole picture. And once you do that, you may get result which is different from the earlier scenario. Okay. Or the other model. Now we will look at the three regression lines that we can actually get here using this model. And there is something that is quite interesting to note. And what is that? That is I can get three regression lines with X and Y here, and all those three regression lines will be parallel to each other. Parallel to each other. Why? Because if I put the values for dummies, all that will change is the intercept. Otherwise, the slope. That remains same. So slope remains same. Because every time we are coming up with same beta for x i. So that's why the lines that we get using uh, dummy variables with uh, quantitative variable, the regression lines become parallel. Okay. Now that means that if I have a data set. When I suspect that the regression line may have changed because there is a change in intercept, I can check that with a dummy. Using dummy, I can see whether the intercept has indeed changed in a statistically significant way or not. And if it didn't, then the change that I observe may have come from the slope and not from the intercept itself. So that leads us to the arena where we use Chow test. When we studied Chow test, I said that uh, there can be that a data set can involve a typical time period like recession or divitization, which involves a change of behavior, which may guide us to think that the model that we considered for the two complete period is not appropriate. The model itself has changed in between. So what we saw in Chow test is that we the test considered two separate regressions and we compare it with the uh, regression on the complete data set. But after learning dummy, what you observe is that dummy is quite effective in telling that whether the change is coming from the intercept. In Chow test, we saw that Chow test only confirms whether there is a change or not, but the test itself doesn't differentiate or distinguish between the change coming from intercept and the change coming from the slope. Right? But using dummies, we can do that. Dummies can tell whether the change is coming from the intercept in a statistically significant way or not. So now we will be uh, our, our natural progress will be to the topic where dummy variables will be used as an alternative to chart test. So dummy as an alternative to challenge. And as you can guess, or as I said, that using this approach, we can actually say whether the slope has changed, whether the source is slope or the intercept. Which was impossible in charts. Now, there are four possibilities for 
underline scenarios of target what are they number one intercept the second is that intercept is one source and slope is one source so one scenario which is the great scenario is that they are same so both in both regression they are the same where we will have coincident regression this is the first one then you can have a scenario where intercept is different but slope is same so that is called parallel regression something that we have just seen then obviously this is same and slope is different in that case we call it concurrent regression and then both different so this similar regression you know the regression are different all the way Now we saw that the advantage of using dummy is that the source of difference can be segregated by running. by running one multiple regression so the sorts of difference can be segregated by running one multiple regression and obviously that we big in science okay so i'll talk about the model okay we we'll look at the model and we'll see how that is being done and obviously for your home reading you will read a model in the book in gujarati where that is actually being performed so what is that i'll talk about gujarati example 9.4 so chapter 9 fourth example so example 9.4 okay so you go and study that and by that you will understand in the real world practical work how the difference is coming up as i said the difference is very the studying the example is very important because otherwise again given a model you will not be able to understand what you are actually getting or probably how you should get what you are asked to get so first look at let's look at the four diagrams that are involved with coincident parallel concurrent and dissimilar regression so for parallel one we have seen so we will be looking at the other three So obviously, I said that the intercept remains same and the slope remains same. So basically, if you are looking at one regression line, you won't be able to tell the difference. So this is our coincident case. Okay. Then comes the parallel regression, which we have seen where basically the lines are parallel. The only change is in the intercept. And then you have those regression lines. Which differ only in slope. So, in our terms of economics, basically we are looking at a rotation. Kind of, but the, that's not the right word to say because they are basically two different regression lines. So, this is our concurrent, 
and then dissimilar we are looking at two entirely different regression lines so you see if this is one then the other is let's say this okay so this is my case of dissimilar regression now we are looking we'll be looking at a model a multiple regression model to be specific which takes into account all these four possibilities so let me write the model the equation of the model here so what is the model now so y t we are saying t because we saw that this kind of a problem appears more in the time series data so to kind of save play we are like this alpha 2 dt plus beta 1 xt so this is our quantitative variable plus beta 2 dt xt so this is new right dt xt and that's why i said that studying this example line for code is important so dt xt plus dt okay so now we will define the dummies and ys and look at what the model is trying to do and then i will see that if we put the values of the dummy how the scenario that we talked about is coming up okay so y is savings x is income t is time Let's see here. What is D? D is one for observations for let's say two thousand one to two thousand eight zero. Otherwise, so that means if I have observation from two thousand one to two thousand sixteen, then otherwise means. Observation for 2009 to 2016. So that's what we are saying. Okay. So that includes for the recession that we observed in 2008. So we had a break. Now, obviously, our standard assumption will be that expectation U I equal to zero. So there are two cases: putting d equal to one and putting d equal to zero. So we get two functions. One is the mean saving function, savings function for 2009 to 2016. That's putting d equal to zero. And uh, what do you get? Y i so the y t given d t equal to zero comma x i so x t x t so that's the first one alpha one plus beta one x t note that this will also become zero if I put d equal to zero okay and this is the power that we have using uh, a variable called d t x t okay. So when I am putting d equal to zero, not only I am uh, kind of eliminating the effect on intercept, but by considering d t x t, I am also eliminating the effect on x t. So that's how I have taken care of both the intercept and the slope. And then the other mean saving function for two thousand one. Eight, and that basically is our that will be expectation y t given d t equal to one comma x t. And 
this will be on one hand you have alpha one plus alpha two, and on the other hand you have beta one plus beta two x two. So by these two we have we have taken all the four cases together. So if there is a change only in intercept, we will have a non-zero value on alpha. If you are dealing with a change in slope, that is a concurrent case, then there will be a change in beta, but there will be no change in alpha two. So I'll get alpha one. Okay. So all that I have to do is now that I have to check the statistical significance of all of this, and then I'll get whether my regression line is separate or not, and if there is separation, whether that separation is very important or not. Okay. So here alpha two is the differential intercept. If you go by name, it is the differential intercept. And beta two is the differential slope, or for beta two we have a very nice name, which is called slope drift. The slope changes by the amount beta two. So as we have seen, that whenever I am talking about dummy, I am not saying that it has to come. As a separate one in plus format, which so introducing dummy in this time, we call it additive form. And as you may guess, that DTXT we call this. Let me write it here. So DTXT we call this multiplicative form. Or interaction dummy, or interaction form, or interaction dummy. Okay. And you see that by using dummy in these both the ways in a single model, we can now pin down the difference of force, whether it's in slope, slope, or intercept, or both, or not. Okay, so. The natural progress will be the next one, which we will do in the next session. We will talk about the interaction approach.